Here's the problem, Judy. You've had years to try and trailblaze a better solution. And all you have done is nothing because you're completely biased. No one can build software that can get access to this data. It's all locked up inside of these EHRs like Epic and Cerner. And none of these EHRs clearly want to make that data readily available. You don't put this thing in writing and send this email out to all your hospital CEO clients and go on the record like this unless you are scared and unless you're really feeling the heat. And the only ones that are getting harmed and all, the only people that can't actually get their data are the actual patients where it's their own data. Oh boy, are we going to jump right into it with uh, one of our favorite targets, Epic, the leading health record, EHR, electronic health record company in the United States, multi-billion dollar private business. Um, the third richest woman is the founder and CEO, Judy Faulkner. And what happened last week was Judy wrote a letter to all of her clients, CEOs of all, all uh, well, not all, but many of the largest hospitals in the United States, saying that they should oppose upcoming regulation from the HHS, the Health and Human Services Department, um, to make it easier for patients to get access to their health record information that's stored in the EHR. Right, so now, hey, I'm an app. I can connect to the EHR. You can say yes, uh, I approve this information to be stored or or shared with this app. So the patient needs to give permission. Um, but what Judy is saying is that patients don't understand what they're giving up. The apps ask for much more information than than they are needed to provide, uh, and so on and so forth. Well, um, here's the problem, Judy. You don't get to share an opinion on this anymore. Why don't you get to share an opinion? Because you've had years to figure this out yourself. You've had years to try and trailblaze a better solution. And all you have done is nothing because you're completely biased. And you don't want this to happen because you like the data silos and you like the data being locked up inside of Epic where hospitals have to pay you hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to install and then maintain your software because that's your business model. You are a SaaS company. You're not a platform company. You could have been a platform company. You could have been an unbelievably dominant and much more profitable, much more impactful business, but you didn't want to do it. You did not want to take the hard course of trying to evolve your business to become a platform, to figure out how to open up data, to embrace this thing called the cloud. Yeah, it's not that new, it's 2020. You didn't want to embrace the cloud like, oh, this company like Salesforce that has over a billion dollars in revenue coming from the rev share that they take from third-party apps that are built on top of the data stored inside of Salesforce. It's literally the same exact business model and business transformation. There is plenty of precedent to show you the road that you need to go down and arguably make a much more dominant business. Because now if you can make money on the apps, now you can justify subsidizing or lowering the cost of your actual SaaS software. Now you're going to actually have much higher, higher margin revenue coming from the app store. And I mean, the amount of applications both just in, in uh, that, that, that developers and startups and just innovators in the community can create to derive healthcare value. I mean, healthcare has been one of the most heavily regulated industries, has the most amount of fragmented information. And that's why I was on this panel in April of last year at the Milken Institute, which was, can the world's biggest companies disrupt healthcare? And my answer was, it better, because it's the only hope that we got, because the incumbents, are not taking it seriously upon themselves to change this industry for the better. The incumbents like the status quo. And I have a couple of clips that are going to show us discussing this in the past. So, Judy, you don't get to have an opinion. Your opinion is beyond biased. And now we're going to show some examples of, of why, well, A, your opinion is, 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 is inappropriate in the first place, and B, why your opinion is actually wrong. There's a great clip here on Kramer. If I am a, uh, let's say, a leader like uh, uh, Jody, uh, Judy Faulkner, 
who uh, privately owns Epic. It would be a possibility if you had that interoperability. She believes it would compromise patients. I'd love to have her on, by the way, privacy. But at the same time, doesn't it just preserve her incumbency? Well, I've learned a long time ago to not question people's motives, but I can tell you, we used to be in the business of hoarding our data. But what we realized is that patients were getting harmed because we were hoarding data. There's an example right near your home, a a boy, 13-year-old, Rory Staunton. He goes to the gym like we all did, falls in a gym, gets a little scratch on his elbow. His own bacteria from his skin gets inside his bloodstream. Now, he goes home, feels bad, throwing up, feeling a leg ache. They take him to his physician, and for a kid his size, his heart rate was really high. They still send that kid home thinking it could be a stomach flu or something bad he ate. He gets so bad, his parents take him to the emergency department. They do blood draw. And unfortunately, his white blood cell count was really high. They still send him home. Now, a few hours later, that boy died. Now, imagine at that time, both the blood lab machines, the patient monitors that measured the heart rate, all were interoperable, all could share data. Algorithms could have seen, look, high white blood cell count, high heart rate for a size, that could mean sepsis. And they could have treated them for sepsis, and Rory would probably be alive here with us today. Do you think, Joe, that if people knew the trade-off that it might mean life or death, for them to not have any information themselves exposed personally, wouldn't they choose life? Absolutely. I know I would. What this is saying is there is so much opportunity to put AI, to put all of the intelligence that we have and enable startups and other tech companies and other manufacturing companies to put that intelligence to work. And the blocker right now is that no one can build software that can get access to this data because it's all locked up inside of these EHRs like Epic and Cerner. And none of these EHRs clearly want to make that data readily available. And that is why we've covered Google Health's uh, expansion into this space and why we're very bullish on them and hopeful that they're successful, A, and B, uh, very optimistic that I think they are actually on the right path and, and going to be able to penetrate this. I think this move by Judy shows that the panic is real, and the you know they're at DefCon Five here. They're they're she. You don't put this thing in writing and send this email out to all your hospital CEO clients and go on the record like this unless you are scared and unless you're really feeling the heat. So she's feeling the heat. Actually, I think this kind of shows weakness on our part. So that means you're on the right track, Google and Apple. Let's not forget. Apple is probably the one that really spurred this response from her because Apple's the one that we've covered here extensively. Their integration with Allscripts, which is a much smaller EHR than Epic, to have this integration. And now the, uh, the, the HHS department is throwing its weight behind this and trying to push this regulation forward around interoperability. Now, let, now let's talk about how, why she doesn't deserve to be able to make this um, complaint, right? So Ben Thompson also wrote about this and he covers here the High Tech Act. Um, and the High, High Tech Act is from the Obama era. This is years and years and years and years old. And in the High Tech Act, which helped Judy, by the way, he talks about, the this idea of interoperability was contemplated and, and laid out in this act, which is over five years old now. So it's not like this thing is coming out of nowhere, this idea of interoperability. It's just that the act tried to get interoperability done. It just didn't expect how much resistance the incumbents would, would put up because they don't want the data to be unsiloed. They want it to be siloed. They want it inside of their systems, which means that their little kingdom is is protected. Well, kingdom just got a big, it's not, the hole hasn't been poked through yet, but some of the bricks are starting to fall down from that wall. 
and uh, and they're feeling it shake. So they're not too happy about this. We have covered this as well. Um, here, where we talk about why it's important to open up these medical records. These organizations, I, I think, should retract their statements and, and should really issue a solemn apology to the American public. And here's why. I bet if we analyzed who is actually funding these nonprofits, I bet a lot of money comes from the incumbent healthcare companies. I bet hospitals. I bet healthcare IT companies like the Epic and Cerner that we've spoken about at length on this show. Um, pharma companies. It's all the status quo, people. I bet the CVSs of the world and the health insurance companies, um, they don't want disruption. They don't want tech monopolies to get access to health records because they know that that will be a nice wedge to blow up these walls that these incumbent companies have been able to build up around data and healthcare. And why this is so frustrating to me is because it's actually putting Americans' lives at stake. And not only is it increasing the cost of care, which is a huge problem in this country, but you're actually being a detriment to people's health care. You're actually causing people to get less care that they need. And, and, and this, this point should not be taken lightly, okay? These organizations are supposed to be here for the patients. This is their argument. They're basically saying that patients are stupid. And they don't understand what the large tech monopolies will do with their data. So what they want to do is say, oh, we need to create committees and we need to make sure that if the, the patient says, I approve for my health record to go into Apple Health Kit, right? So this is the patient giving their explicit permission. To give the health record into Apple Health, okay? These health uh, nonprofits are saying, well, no, 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 no. Consumers don't understand what they're getting themselves into because then the large tech companies could go and sell this data. And so we need to protect the consumer. Wake up, guys. It's 2019. You think every other day there isn't a story about Facebook and Google and now, you know, 50 states going after them for privacy violations. You think that consumers don't understand the, the implications of what happens if they give their data to Apple? We've been covering this a lot. Um, we'll continue to cover this. And it's needed because clearly the incumbents don't want to change. Um, and I think... As you start to break down these walls and we start to open up data, we're going to see a flood of opportunity. I think there are going to be so many new financings and funding rounds and follow on funding rounds for tech startups in the healthcare space. I think this is a great time to be building a business in the tech space, in, in the health tech space and making it. You want to make a bet that as 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 data becomes more accessible from the EHR. What kind of business would you want to build around that? Now is the time to start. And I would, and, and if you're in that industry, I think you're in a great place. And I think you're going to start to see funding become much more accessible. I think you're going to see VCs be much more willing to invest in these kinds of businesses because this has been the big problem. I might be able to build a great product, but how do you get scale? You can't ever get access to the data. You have to go hospital system by hospital system to get the data. And just no startup can do that. You need a massive sales force and it takes months and quarters, sometimes years to negotiate these deals with the hospitals. I mean, what new tech startup can actually pull that off? It's extremely difficult. Um, so now, finally, we're starting to see some progress. This is the most progress I've seen so far. And it's because you actually have the incumbents going on record like this. This is a very, I think, risky political move. Um, I think she's putting a lot on the line to do this and make it very black and white that she does not want this to happen. Um, and I'm sure she clout, she like shrouds this and says, oh, well, you know, there's a better path, a slower path. We need to be more measured in how we open up this data and more responsible. That is the excuse the whole industry has been using for decades about why they haven't opened up a shred of data. <laughs> it's all privacy, privacy, privacy. Well, here's something for you. I, 
I bet you China has already hacked 23andMe. I bet you China has probably hacked half of these hospitals already. They already got access to the data. The only ones that are getting harmed and all, the only people that can't actually get their data are the actual patients where it's their own data. But if you were a hacker, a big Chinese uh, or foreign government funded hacking, you know, state agency, and you want to get access to these data, I guarantee you can get access to these data records if you really want to get access to them. It's not Fort Knox. So um, the patients ultimately are the ones that lose with all of this, with all of these games, really. So it's unfortunate. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.